Welcome back everyone to Tales of a White Mage. This time I'll be tackling another piece of the uh, 2.5 2. content, one of the new dungeons. This is Anderpore Keep Hard Mode. This is the hard mode version of the previous endgame dungeon from 2.0, Anderpore Keep. And it's a lot more challenging, <laughs> let's just say that. Uh, to start off with, we started in the same spot as before. But this time, instead of going right, we go left. As you just saw there, there was a Ochu blocking the way. Kill him quickly, because he spawns stuff. That's about it. None of these enemies are really special in any way. They don't even they don't really do anything. Even that big goat-like thing, I can't read names, obviously, from here. And it just they don't seem to do anything. However, here we have this room with these tentacle things. What you can do is you can literally lure the enemies under them and have the tentacles damage the enemies because they will damage both you and the enemies. So you might want to be a little careful of that. And then here we have some more of the same enemies that we just fought. Some more wolves and another Ochu, I think. Yes. These Ochus are blocking the path, so you have to kill them as soon as possible. Because, as I said, the longer you take to kill them, the more enemies they spawn. Even though these enemies are super weak, it, it's, it's a thing still. Okay, and here we are coming up to the first boss. You could probably tell already, but in this dungeon, I am not completely blind. <laughs> um, one of my DPS, I think it is, is a free company member and he has completed this dungeon before. I went into this dungeon a little bit late, so I, not everyone was new. So I'm playing as I would normally play, both DPSing and healing. Right now this boss does something of note. He does a few things of note actually. First is that directional AoE. If you are targeted by that, run towards the boss and try not to get anyone else hit by that either. It doesn't do a substan it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, but it will knock you back, which isn't a big deal anyway. But you do not want the boss moving a whole lot, because it will just be a pain, so. And I'm fairly certain he does more damage to you if you are further away, so just run up close to him, and that's it. Here you should see another move come up in, in a moment. There we go, he is targeting a player. That player, if they do not hide behind the pillar quick enough, they will die. So that move does huge damage over times. Each click nearly kills you so two or three of them and you are dead to avoid that uh, I'm pretty certain I do get targeted in this fight so I can sort of show you but since I'm ranged I'm standing near the pillars waiting to be targeted anyway oh yeah see how that player there is targeted and he moves behind the pillar that's what you have to do the pillar will save you however the pillar is unfortunately destroyed so it's no longer useful see there I am targeted I run towards the boss to try and mitigate the damage and it works he does next to nothing so that's fine his single target um, attacks are quite powerful so if you are however in a weakened state like uh, one of our ninjas or if you have got a, if your health ain't quite at max, try not to get hit by his single targets. Basically, just really avoid it. See, there I am targeted, so therefore I hide behind the statue to to not die. <laughs> because if I die, it won't end well. Even though we are pretty much done with this, so even if I did die, I wouldn't now. Anyway, after that, we are gifted with a gear piece level 100 and a crafting item so that's good anyway we move on to the next area this is 
I didn't realize this at first, but this is actually the same spot we fought the boss from the normal mode of I'm the Poor Keep. So, it just goes to show the layout of this dungeon is completely different. We start from the end and sort of work our way backwards. Hmm. Anyway, in this room we had a couple of those bug things, I don't know what they're called, and a Marlboro. It's pretty common to just murder the Marlboro because we all know what bad breath can do. And the like. And we have that guy, I don't really know what he does because he died really quickly, so... I honestly don't really know what he can do. Nothing of, nothing really special from what I know of. And here we have one of the um, Ents, I think it's called. It's basically a living tree. He does a large AoE around him, and much like the Ochus before, he will spawn mini enemies. They're not that dangerous, they don't really do anything and they die really quickly, so you can get around them without much trouble. And here we are at the second boss. As you can probably tell I do little jump cuts here, but that's because the DPS is walking us through like what we need to do. So it's the same time because we spent like two, three minutes there just discussing what to do here. Anyway, this guy is the boogeyman. Everyone told me he wasn't real. They lied. My whole life is a lie. <laughs> Anyway, as you just saw, the guy went invisible. You can still see him, but you cannot target or hurt him. However, he can still hurt you. Kill the add that spawns, and it will drop like a little light circle. Uh, I don't really need to, but... So I don't. But anyway, you, when you run into that light circle, you are gifted with a buff. I don't know why I'm attacking the add. But... I stop immediately after I real realize what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, if you are gifted with a buff that will last, I think, five to six seconds. And when that buff is over, you will pulse a like, light, basically. You will pulse a light bubble around you. Not too big, but large enough. And if you hit the invisible boogeyman, you will make him visible again. So just do that. Uh, you saw there that the boogeyman raised a couple of those zombie guys that were on the floor. They're nothing special, just deal with them, they don't really do much. I think they put a bleed status on you, but other than that, nothing. <laughs> they don't really do anything special, they're just sort of there. So then I get a buff called Irradiated. That means if I am next to the boss, when the buff runs out, that pulse of light, boom, knocks him back and makes him visible again. Oh, that was pretty devastating. I'm not too sure what that was. I think that was... Um, because I didn't actually see the enemy do that, but towards the end of the fight, uh, we've already it's already happened, so um, my apologies. But the boogeyman will cast doppelganger and split in half. I didn't know that <laughs> my first time, so I just thought, well, we killed the boss. Now what? Why? Why can't we leave? But there is actually a second boogeyman right over there in that corner. There he is. He splits off in half and his health is the same basically as the one that when he split off. I did not know that at first, but apparently I missed the cast so I couldn't, I didn't see it. 
Anyway, just deal with them and you are gifted with two treasure chests which have each one piece of level 100 gear and a crafting item in each. That's two pieces of item 100 and two crafting items. And here we have the overflow which takes us to the next room and this is a room I've been waiting to see since they announced it. This is the demon wall room. There are four demon walls in total. Thankfully you don't actually have to fight them. And here we are spending a couple minutes just discussing the fight, I think. I don't know, no we didn't spend that long, we didn't spend that long. But yes, as you can see there are four demon wolves, which thankfully we don't actually have to fight, so that's a good thing. But this is a DPS check slash race, basically. We have to kill the enemies as quickly as possible. As you could just as you just saw there in the in the back, that demon wall moved towards us. Yep. The demon walls close in on you. <laughs> and if you do not kill them in time or if you do not kill the enemies in time and the demon walls close in on you it's game over you wipe thankfully I haven't actually seen that happen to this day I've only heard about that from my free company and other people so there's that So various enemies will spawn, nothing that we haven't seen before, and nothing especially dangerous. Here we have a couple gargoyles, which we've dealt with these plenty of times. So we know what, what to expect from these guys. All right, and that's that. It really isn't much to worry about there. It's just if your DPS is decent, you can get through that no problems. But if you can't DPS that well, or if for some reason you have like bad DPS, like two summoners or something, then good luck. You're gonna need it. But here we are, the final boss of Amdapur Keep Hard Mode. First time I saw him, I thought he looked like, um, what's that, guys? Crap. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I skipped forward here a little bit because I died, and well, that can happen if you're not paying attention. And that was just me. I just wasn't paying attention to the, um, the spinning blade things. But anyway, now that we've actually got our stuff together and we've discussed it a little bit more, not a whole lot, just a little bit. And I said why I died, I apologised. And we start the boss proper this time. Start off with, he doesn't really do anything special straight away. But it doesn't take too long before he starts spawning those 
spinny blade things. We've seen them before. I think the first time we saw them was in Hawk Manor, I do believe. I think it was the hard mode of Hawk Manor though. I, I don't really remember. Anyway, here we have a AoE that probably, I don't know if it will kill you or not, but it will grow non-stop. I assume to the very edge of the arena unless you kill all three of the ads if you kill all three of the ads he will stop growing that and he will use it just don't be in it I'm fairly certain that will kill you you saw there that the tank I do believe it was yes it was the tank was trapped inside a little bubble thing much like the gals from Titan just defeat the get, just defeat the bubble, and that'll be that. There we have some some directional AOEs that cover half the arena, basically. And that spinny disc thing. If you hit by that, you will take a good amount of damage. So don't get hit by that. That's what killed me last time. And don't stand in the AOEs. As before, he what he does is he imprisons someone and then does the AoE, however he gives you plenty of time to get that person out and move. Plenty of time, there's no real, ha no real hassle. And here he is doing his large AoE thing again, and I am trapped inside the bubble this time. <laughs> I, you can attack it yourself, but I've done minuscule damage, so there's that. Kill the ad, and he will stop increasing the AoE. I don't know why, it just does. To be honest, that is the fight. There's nothing really that special about it. Um, we've seen all the mechanics, now it's just dealing with the mechanics now. Okay, and with that, the boss is basically dead. So, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time on Tales of the White Mage on whatever it is I post next, or whatever it is you watch next. Because there's no real order to these, it's just do them, and that's about it. But anyway, until next time, everyone, have a wonderful day. Bye bye now.